San Antonio starts right now. Top local story, two people recovering in the hospital after a double shooting overnight. We'll have the latest details from police. A yet to be published book is ramping up Democrats demands to allow new evidence be admitted in the impeachment trial. I'm Andrew Dimbert on Capitol Hill. I'll have that story coming up. And taking a peek outside with live cam, Mike Osterhage is standing by with your Monday forecast. And good morning to you. It is Monday. It is January 27th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. A little bit milder out there today. It is after a unusual weather weekend. It's mild. A lot of folks need to mow the grass. It's like we've skipped through the rest of winter and are jumping right into spring. I had every intention of doing that yesterday, but it was still too damp from some of the yeah, fog it was and, damp. and everything. So couldn't dry. <laughs> There's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. But okay. Hey, today's going to be a continuation of the weekend. Uh, we do have a couple of rain chances this week, which is nice. I don't think it's going to be anything huge, but you know, at least there are those couple of uh, chances out there. And this is what it had uh, looked like yesterday. And I hate to say I did not get my uh, show started over there and it's not a good way to start the day, but we are at 50 degrees right now here in town and it's SAPD the rescue. It's the first one over there, Marcus. That's it. And there's a look at, see, they are there for us, the San Antonio Police Department. There we do have clear skies starting off this morning, and we've got these temperatures that are in the mid to upper 40s, low 50s, so we're about uh, 8, 9 degrees above normal as of right now. And there's a little bit of fog off to the east, especially down around Corpus Christi, just a hint of it around Gonzales, still some of that moisture left over in the ground. As far as the allergens, mold is on the high side. Hopefully that's going to be going down. Still hanging in there with the mountain cedar and throughout the rest of today, basically uh, steady temperatures or so upper 40s, low 50s on the chilly side. Jacket's pretty good idea, but not this afternoon. 75 degrees, mostly sunny skies. We are going to see the clouds increase tonight and there is a chance for a couple of showers late tonight and then overnight the first part of the day tomorrow. We'll talk about that and take a look ahead at yet another Really good weekend coming up. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time safer traffic right now. The man to the rescue, Officer Marcus Trujillo. Thank you, sir. Well, you've saved me plenty of times, Mike. As we take a look out there out the, on the roadways, you can see that the map uh, void of any incidents out there. So that's the great news. So we're off to a great start on this Monday morning. Roads are dry. Visibility pretty good considering that uh, there's no light out. And uh, as we take a look at Transguide, Highway 98 couples eastbound and westbound lane so far. No issues there. And 410 impaired and vital looking pretty good. Let's move over to 1604 at Bandera. Traffic eastbound and westbound along 1604. No problems, no delays, and then things look great up there. 281 by the airport. Mark. Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, two men in the hospital after they were both shot while watching TV inside their north side apartment. San Antonio police say it happened around 11 last night, the 11,700 block of West Avenue. SAPD says they were, the two were watching TV when bullets started blasting through their second story apartment window. Neighbors say they saw a dark colored SUV drive away from the area shortly after the shots were heard. One of the men, men was shot in the face, the other in the back. They were both taken to University Hospital. One is in critical condition, the other is stable. Detectives now investigating what led up to that shooting. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers uh, need your help to find a person wanted in a murder case. Police say back in November of 2016, a road rage incident led to a deadly shooting on Hebner Road near Northwest Military Drive. SAPD says the suspect fired multiple shots into a vehicle, killing one of the passengers. Police need your help to identify and locate the person in these photos. If you have any information, please call Crime Stoppers. You could get a reward. This morning, Converse police still looking for three suspects after a shooting sent one man to the hospital. It happened at a home on Meadowgate last night. Police say the three suspects took their shirts off after ditching the car were seen running into a field. Converse Police Lieutenant Jeff Shook says a disturbance led to a physical fight at the home. He says as the victim was running from the home, he was shot in the leg. Three people then got into a black BMW and took off before ditching the car at a nearby park. Police say they have evidence left behind by at least one of the suspects in the car that will help narrow down who they are looking for. And topping your morning headlines, a monumental loss in the world of sports with the death of Kobe Bryant. It continues to be a very big story this morning. The five-time NBA champ and 2008 NBA MVP was among nine people who lost their lives in a helicopter crash in California. Tragically among the dead, his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna. They were on their way to see her play in his own tournament, Thousand Oaks, California, when the helicopter they were traveling in went down in foggy conditions 
in the hills of Calabasas. Bryant and his wife Vanessa had four daughters. He retired as the third leading scorer in NBA history. The self-nicknamed Black Mamba was a prolific gifted shooter with hard-edged work ethic that thrilled his fans and almost everyone else, even those who reviled him. John Altobelli, a former University of Houston assistant coach, and his wife and daughter are also among the nine killed. Altobelli was a two-year letter winner for the Cougars from 84 to 85, and he served as an assistant coach in 87, according to the University of Houston. He was entering his 28th season as the head coach at Orange Coast College, where he was the longest tenured baseball coach in the school's history. We will have more on the passing of Kobe Bryant throughout GMSA and in your morning sports. To the impeachment showdown, reports say an upcoming book by the president's former national security advisor, John Bolton, alleges the president personally tied Ukraine aid to the Biden investigation. Well, that directly contradicts President Trump's defense team's arguments. Andrew Dimebert is on Capitol Hill with the latest. Democrats want one witness to testify more than any other, former National Security Advisor John Bolton. A new report by the New York Times shows just how critical to the case he may be. According to the Times, four weeks ago, Bolton submitted a manuscript to the White House of an unpublished book he wrote called The Room Where It Happened. The Times says Bolton detailed an August 2019 conversation with Trump, claiming the president told Bolton personally that he wanted to continue withholding military aid to the Ukraine until officials there launched investigations into Trump's rivals, including Joe Biden. ABC News has not independently reviewed the manuscript. This reported firsthand account undercuts what the president's lawyers argued in the impeachment trial over the weekend. There is simply no evidence anywhere that President Trump ever linked security assistance to any investigations. President Trump flatly denying the new report, I never told John Bolton that the aid to the Ukraine was tied to investigations into the Democrats, including the Bidens, and released the military aid to Ukraine without any conditions or investigations and far ahead of schedule. Democrats feel this only boosts their case for additional witnesses and documents. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer pleading to some moderate Republicans on Twitter to go against party lines and vote to introduce new evidence in the trial. John Bolton has the evidence. It's up to four Senate Republicans to ensure John Bolton, Mick Mulvaney, and the others with direct knowledge of President Trump's actions testify in the Senate trial. Bolton has said he would testify if subpoenaed by the Senate. Meanwhile, the trial resumes this afternoon. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Today, world leaders and Holocaust survivors are gathering to mark the 75th anniversary of the Soviet Army's liberation of Auschwitz. It was the largest and deadliest Nazi concentration camp. Survivors are laying wreaths for victims at the camp's execution wall. The ceremony comes against the backdrop of rising anti-Semitism around the world. More than one million people were murdered at Auschwitz, including nearly one million Jews. On the day of the liberation, only 7,000 were still, uh, still alive. 438, 50 degrees. Still ahead, a look back at an interview with basketball star Kobe Bryant following his retirement from basketball. And the San Antonio Spurs fall to the Raptors in the midst of the news of death of Kobe Bryant. We will have more from the game coming up next. Live cam giving us a peek outside. So happy to have you with us on this Monday morning. We'll check in with Mike. He's got a kind of, he has a mixed bag of weather forecasting. Both the Spurs and Raptors had to go out and play after learning of the passing of Kobe Bryant just hours before tip-off. With the news still fresh on everyone's minds, the Raptors and Spurs both took 24-second violations in their first possession of the game. The 24-second violation paying tribute to Bryant, who wore the number 24 in the second half of his career. Spurs fans gave Bryant a standing ovation after the shot clock violations. Once the game got started, uh, let's see, uh, one of the leading scorers for Toronto scored 35 points. Lead the Pastors past the, uh, Raptors rather past the Spurs 110-106. DeMar DeRozan, who scored 14 points, was raised in Compton, California, and was a fan of Bryant growing up. Became very close friends with him. Uh, Derek White uh, had 14 points for San Antonio. Here's a look at the rest of the Spurs games this week. They travel to Chicago to take on the Bulls uh, tonight at 7 o'clock. Then Wednesday, they're back in town to welcome the Jazz. They are at home Saturday to take on the Charlotte Hornets, that game 
is Saturday at 8 o'clock. Right now it's 442, 50 degrees. Up ahead outside the sports world, celebrities paying tribute to Kobe as well. We have their reaction coming up. And next to look back at an interview with Kobe Bryant following his retirement from the NBA. Welcome back, everyone. You're trying to house 445. Fans are reacting to the shocking death of basketball great Kobe Bryant. Robin Roberts sat down with Bryant when he retired from the game. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Kobe Bryant off the court from his retirement. Are you really ready to let her go? I am. I am. But the thing, I'm, I'm carrying this with me no matter what. You know what I mean? But internally, my love, my passion, everything that I've learned from it is always going to be with me. To his Oscar win. Talk to me about the moment, Kobe Bryant, that you heard your name called out at the Academy Awards. I, I sat there for a minute because I couldn't believe like this is actually happening. And I looked at my wife who just gave me this big smile. To becoming a writer. Why did you decide to write this book about a girl playing tennis? Well, I have four girls at home. And uh, you know, I want to make sure it's important that they you know, see characters that look like them and that are also athletes. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the latest tributes and talk live with Scottie Pippen. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. I was just so shocked. Yeah, the, the uh, images uh, from the Spurs game, I saw the 24-second violations play out first with the Raptors and then with the Spurs, and then they showed some cutaway shots of Tim Duncan wiping, wiping away tears, uh, Becky Can Hammond crying, a very emotional pop who spoke, you know, in very subdued tones after the game, so it was... Um, we used to love to tease him and Shaq as they would come to town. Yeah, respected definitely. Respected him uh, so yes, much. Yesterday was a surreal day, for sure. Yeah, let's check the roadways and see how traffic's looking. Marcus? Well, right now as we take a look at the map, so far, we're doing great. No incidents out there. So Monday morning is off to a great start as far as your commute is concerned. So shouldn't be too much out there to slow you down, uh, get in your way at this point. Now, later on, well, that could change. Let's take a look at uh, Trans Guide right now. We're moving over to 410 at Exchange Parkway. So far, traveling both directions there on Loop 410. Move along fairly nice. No problems there. 35 at 410 on the northeast side. I-10 at the Y closer to downtown. You can see no problems right there by that uh, infamous fine silver curve. And then Highway 98 couples eastbound and westbound lanes are moving along with no delays. We can get a fairly decent shot of the downtown area by looking over here. 35 at Cesar Chavez. You can see traffic is moving along. So all in all, not a bad start to your Monday morning. Considering the fact that uh, it's Monday, you know, yeah. everybody's back to work. Did this weekend go by quickly? It too quick. It, it really did. I smoked a brisket yesterday, so I was outside from you know, like seven to almost seven. How was it? It was really, really we'll pretty good. We'll have to good. take your word for it because it, you didn't bring it in. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. It's gone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, the, the grass is growing exponentially. The spring feels like it's in the air. You know, it was very mild and yeah. I wasn't the only one cooking yesterday. So it is almost, I feel like we've, we've jumped right into maybe March. How warm did we get yesterday? We got to 80 yesterday, so yeah, way above normal, obviously, um, and it's going to be nice again today. It's going to be warm. It's going to start to cool off a little bit this week, uh, and then we're still looking at another fantastic weekend. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, we have we have a lot of going on this weekend. Plus, we need good weather. It, exactly. Plus, a um, couple of rain chances. Not anything spectacular, but at least there are a couple of uh, chances of rain. This was yesterday. We did have some fog, and... Uh, a certain officer standing about 10 feet from me sent this picture in and just a small little layer of fog just crossing the street like that, Marcus. We saw those yesterday morning on the way to my daughter's volleyball tournament just kind of spread out here mm -hmm. and there. Move over another block and there was nothing there. That's and that's kind of the situation this morning as well. Thank you for the uh, KSAC Connect picture, officer. This is what it looks like this morning. We've got plenty of clear skies out there and temperatures are about here in town, about uh, eight, nine degrees above normal. We've even got some upper 30s up there in comfort at 38 degrees, 48 at Randolph. A lot of dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, um, maybe a little slight milky shade of the sky or a high wispy cloud or two and that's going to be about it and there is some fogs I showed you off the top of the show down here around Corpus Christi and there's a little bit over there toward uh, Gonzales now this computer model and it's a little more aggressive as far as getting rain in here the the 
earliest as far as about mid evening tonight, maybe a couple of scattered showers here and there. Obviously, we're going to see the clouds increase late today, but especially late tonight and tomorrow morning is when the best chance of rain is going to be moving on in here, even a couple of uh, thunderstorms, but it's going to move through very quickly. So by probably the end of the commute, at least or at the soonest or at least by mid morning, uh, most all of that's going to be clearing on out. We've got nice weather then tomorrow afternoon in through Wednesday. As far as the uh, humidity, it is going to continue to go up as the day progresses, helping to feed some of those showers around here. And in some places, I mean, we're going to be kind of on the verge of where you notice the humidity a little bit more. Then another front can moves on through here, dries us out, and that's going to slowly cool things down a little bit. It's not going to be any big cold snaps, but it's going to keep temperatures down plus more more uh, clouds later on in the week. So here's a longer range computer model. This is tomorrow and it's got the rain in there in the morning, clearing on out. Wednesday looks fantastic. Then on Thursday, we do have the next chance for some rain and that's going to be throughout much of the day on Thursday and then into early Friday. Obviously, this computer model has most of it down to the south and to the southeast, and then behind that, it clears out quite nicely. You may have a couple of extra clowns around by Sunday, but another fantastic looking weekend. Today, 70 at noon, sunny skies, beautiful, beautiful day today, and 75 for high temperatures, so about uh, 10 degrees above normal again. Now, over the next couple of days, with this front that moves on through, showers tomorrow morning, late tonight, tomorrow morning, and then more sunshine in the afternoon, 70 down to 41 starting off Wednesday, then back down to normal on Wednesday afternoon, and only the 50s thanks to the cloud cover in part on Thursday and Friday. So we will definitely cool down. Saturday morning, the Western Heritage Braden Cattle Drive going through downtown, and we've got the big case at Corral party. It's going to be Great. A little cool in the morning, beautiful in the afternoon. We are all going to be there. We mm -hmm. hope that you will join us as well. Come say hello. It's going to be fun. Fiona and I will be broadcasting it, and we'll walk down the street, follow the uh, well, yellow not brick too, road. Not, not too closely behind the Longhorns, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> and join you guys. We okay. look forward to it. We'll be there 9 to 1. It's a date. Saturday, 451 right now, 452 exactly, 50 degrees. Still ahead, celebrities around the world are paying tribute following the passing of Kobe Bryant. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, nine, zero, five, Fireball six. Daily four, nine, five, nine, seven, Fireball six. And your catch five numbers, 14, 16, 26, 27, 33. Lotto, 22, 25, 29, 37, 39, 44. Powerball numbers, two, nine, 17, 36, 67, 18 is the Powerball. It's now $400 million for the jackpot. And the power play was two. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences will be hosting this year's nominees for the annual Oscars luncheon this afternoon. The event has been held at the Beverly Hilton for nearly four decades, but a shortened Oscar schedule meant a change of venue. This year, the nominees will meet, mingle, and pose for the class photo in the Ray Dolby Ballroom. The Oscars will air right here on KSAT coming up on February 9th. Meanwhile, celebrities paying tribute to Kobe Bryant and Bad Boys reuniting. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Andrea Fuji. Social media was filled with celebrities paying tribute to basketball star Kobe Bryant, who died on Sunday. Justin Bieber posted in part, It can't be. You always encouraged me, Mamba. Jimmy Kimmel tweeted, He was great, charismatic, and among the hardest working athletes ever. But what impressed me most was how deeply involved Kobe was with his four daughters. And Demi Lovato said, This makes me so sad. Kobe, you were always so sweet to me. I'm a sucker for you. The Jonas Brothers have a new home for a while. The trio has announced their Las Vegas residency at the Park Theater at the MGM. Shows start April 1st through the 18th. In these streets, I never trusted anybody but me. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are back as Bad Boys for Life takes the number one spot at the box office, bringing in more than $62 million. If you fail, it will be a massacre. Rounding out the top three spots, 1917. It's the historical drama's fourth week in a row at a top spot. We've no choice but to embark on this perilous journey. And Doolittle comes in third. And happy birthday to comedian Patton Oswalt. He turns 51. That's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. All right now it's 457, 49 degrees. The latest on a crash that ended with the death of a woman on Calabria Drive. More on the new charges that have been filed in the case. Also had Motorola ready to ship out the newest version of its foldable Razer smartphone. We have the details.
live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A suspect facing a new charge after the death of a woman in a car crash over the weekend. We'll have the latest. The world pauses to remember a basketball icon killed in a hel helicopter rather crash over the weekend. Outside with live cam, uh, upper 40s at last check out at the airport as we look towards downtown and kick off your work week. Good morning to you. It is Monday. It is January 27th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. We're knocking at the door of February. We sure are already. And let's see how the work week is looking weather wise. Not While we're feeling, starting off, just absolutely not, not feeling wintry today. No, not at all. I mean, yesterday we were up to 80, and today we're going to be up in the mid 70s. Normal high temperatures, mid 60s right now. We are going to get sort of a reality check as the week progresses, though. Temperatures are going to be uh, getting back down to normal and then some later on in the week. Right now we are on the above normal side in the basically mid upper 40s around the area, and not much of a breeze out there. Dew points are still very comfortable. There is a hint of fog, though, off to the east. A couple of spots are reporting just a, a little bit of fog as of right now over there in toward Gonzales. A lot of it down along the, uh, the coastal plain as well and right along the coast in Corpus Christi. We've got some uh, visibilities that are down to just a quarter mile down there in Corpus Christi. And as you can see, just hints of it going up 35 Gonzales at five miles as of right now. So just kind of keep an eye out to off to the east and a little bit of extra moisture left over in the ground right now. And as far as the allergens, mold is on the high side. This was yesterday's count, of course. Uh, hopefully with the drier air in place, that's going to be dropping down. Mountain Cedar, it's still moderate. Now, we do have a couple of fronts coming through this week, so I don't know if it's going to get the last shake of the trees or not, but uh, that's some fairly decent news as far as Mountain Cedar. We do have a couple of rain chances coming in here this week, and like I said, temperatures will make a slow decline. Weekend, it's looking good. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything going on? Well, Mike, as we take a look, still looking pretty good out there on the highway. So the highways are uh, uh, running along fairly well with no delays in anyone's travel times. Let's take a look at Transguide right now. I-10 and Callahan, you can see this is a shot from Callahan looking back east towards the downtown area. And of course, there's the I-10-410 interchange nicely lit up. But so far, eastbound and westbound lanes, no delays. Leslie? Thank you very much, Marcus. San Antonio police have charged a man with intoxication manslaughter after a deadly crash on the west side this weekend. 18-year-old Stephen Medina was booked following the crash in the 3600 block of Calabra yesterday. SAPD says when they arrived on the scene, they found the driver of the vehicle passed out and highly intoxicated. The woman was dead outside the vehicle. Police tell us it appears due to road rash that the woman may have been dragged, but there is no evidence she was actually hit by a vehicle. San Antonio police still looking for multiple suspects after a man was killed during a home invasion this weekend. Police say the suspects went into a house on Hidalgo Lane Saturday night to rob the people inside. A man in his 30s was shot in the leg and bled to death after a bullet hit a major artery. Police tell us they're looking for four people they believe might have been involved. Fans have been sharing their grief overnight after the death of Kobe Bryant, remembering him not just for his determination on the basketball court, but for his larger-than-life personality and his devotion to family. This is the investigation into the helicopter crash that killed Bryant is now getting underway. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. This morning, new clues about the crash that took the life of NBA legend Kobe Bryant. That column of smoke was first seen just before 10 a.m. South of 101 helicopter went down. <laughs> Emergency crews rushed to the remote scene. They did a search of the area for survivors. Unfortunately, all the survivors on board were determined to have been perished. Now, as officials clear away debris at the crash site, which could take days, investigators are working to piece together why the helicopter went down, killing Bryant along with his 13-year-old daughter and all seven others on board. The trip was supposed to take less than half an hour, but nearly 45 minutes after takeoff, witnesses saw the chopper begin to struggle. Well, I heard a, uh, a helicopter just flying just way too low, and I heard like a loud thud noise. We can see that the aircraft hit at a very high speed. It was not controlled. There was no attempt to land. And so whatever happened here was catastrophic and happened in those last 15 seconds of flight. Visibility at the time of the crash was so bad the LAPD had grounded police helicopters at the time, but the Sheriff's Department says it's too soon to know whether fog played a role. Those closest to Bryant and his daughter describe being crippled by the news. A lot of us broke down. It was just like everybody started getting on their knees. 
Known for his love of basketball, former President Obama stunned, tweeting Kobe was a legend on the court and just getting started in what would have been just as meaningful a second act. Memorials across the country growing by the hour, the biggest in Los Angeles where fans say Kobe was larger than life. Overnight, other NBA legends like Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar pay tribute. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Well, coming up in our next half hour, we're going to hear from Spurs legend David Robinson, his thoughts on Bryant's passing. You can find even more reaction on KSAT.com. President Trump's defense team will continue their opening arguments today when the Senate impeachment trial reconvenes. Both sides were given 24 hours over three days to present their opening statements. House managers wrapped up Friday. The president's attorneys began their opening on Saturday uh, using just two hours of their time. There's a coordinated effort to trace the potential spread of the Wuhan coronavirus in Los Angeles. Three agencies there are trying to identify people who have been in close contact with the unnamed patient. The person in Los Angeles is one of two confirmed coronavirus cases in California. According to the CDC, there are now five confirmed cases in the United States. China's health minister has said people infected with the coronavirus can spread the disease before showing any symptoms. 506, 49 degrees. Still ahead, Porsche is airing its first Super Bowl ad in 23 years. We're going to highlight their new electric vehicle. And next in your consumer headlines, why Google has found itself at the center of a large antitrust investigation. And taking a look outside with live cam. A little bit of rain in the forecast. Not going to be a washout, but boy, we're on the track for having another fabulous weekend. Mike has details coming up. Time now 509. In your morning consumer headlines, multiple levels of U.S. governments are teaming up to investigate Google. Dozens of states are looking into the tech giant for potential violation of antitrust laws. Now the attorneys general might be getting help from the U.S. Justice Department. State and federal officials are set to meet January 3rd in Washington. The focus is Google's search protocols, advertising, and data collection. Streaming wars are definitely heating up, but Netflix seems poised to retain its crown. A new hit, part of the success, the new original series on Netflix, Witcher, on track to be one of the service's greatest ratings wins. USA Today reports about 76 million homes stream the series. That could make it Netflix's most viewed first season ever. Ratings also up about 40% for The Crown. Almost 9 million new subscribers signed on to the streaming service recently. That surpasses the number of expectations by more than a million. Disney Plus making its own mark among viewers with the new hit, The Mandalorian. With an eye on the job market, Walmart is testing out a higher minimum wage. The company now says it's rolling out a $12 an hour minimum at hundreds of its stores. That compares with an $11 minimum at more than 5,000 U.S. locations. The roaring U.S. labor market may, may be peaking. A survey by the National Association for Business Economics now says just as many American companies are reporting job decreases as increases. Experts say that could mean job growth could slow this year. But they also point out with unemployment around historic lows, it could also indicate difficulties in finding workers. 511, 49 degrees. Still ahead, the Grammys weren't the only awards given out this weekend. We're going to tell you who else got honored. And next, Motorola is taking pre-orders now for that uh, reincarnation of the foldable Razer smartphone. We have the details. I think the most exciting thing about the MyWW program, it's not a one-size-fits-all plan. The MyWW personal assessment gives you questions and guide you to the customized solution that's right for you. Sweet snacks. Most days. <laughs> Takes into consideration my lifestyle. Oh, love me some eggs. I found a plan that makes losing weight easier, and I feel incredible. The new program from WW, Weight Watchers Reimagined. Join for less than a dollar a day. Hurry, offer ends January 27th. Saturdays happen, pain happens, Aleve it. Aleve is proven stronger and longer on pain than Tylenol. When pain happens, Aleve it, all day strong. Every glass of Tropicana Pure Premium Orange Juice has a million little sips of sunshine. It's 100% of your daily vitamin C and 100% delicious, making every moment in the morning brighter. Tropicana, sip your sunshine. 
Motorola's foldable phone, the Razer, is back and now available for pre-order. Kenneth Moten and Kimberly Brooks have details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, you can now pre-order the Motorola Razer foldable phone. The 2004 version of Motorola Razer became an icon in the industry. It's still one of the best-selling phones ever. The new one costs $1,500, and it's only available from Verizon. And could six-second videos be making a comeback? One of Vine's co-founders has launched Vite on Android and iOS. The video app will go head-to-head -head with TikTok. A partner program to pay creators is supposed to come down soon. Finally, Porsche's about to air its first Super Bowl ad in 23 years. It features the company's Taycan electric car, which seems to have been stolen from Porsche's museum in Germany. A Hollywood-style chase follows with guards driving older model Porsches. The ad will air in Sunday's first quarter. You know the connoisseurs say Porsche mm. instead of Porsche. There we go. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Tomato, tomato, Porsche, Porsche. <laughs> it doesn't tomato. matter. If which is got, it? Which one is it? Yeah. It's either one. Either it, one. It is? It's yeah, I've, I've, I've heard both. Oh. I've heard both here, heard both in Germany. So I think you're covered either way. Mm -hmm. All we know is there's no substitute. That's <laughs> what they say. <laughs> Let's check out the roadways. Marcus, what's happening? So, Marcus, is that like Audi, Audi? No, there is no <laughs> Audi. <laughs> As we it's take Audi a look Murphy. at the... That's, yeah, there's a guy in a car. Yeah. So it's Audi Murphy and See? Audi. Told sure. you. Yes, ma'am. Told you there were two. You said yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You. I'll be oh. over there in a second <laughs> to deal with that. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, still looking great with no problems. Tootie Wood is Bruce Woodley. You just can't win this morning, can you, Mark? Right now, no problems out there. So we're looking great on the roadways. The roadways are dry for now, no accidents. It is Monday morning, so uh, that can change in the blink of an eye. Anything can happen. However, hopefully, on this Monday morning, will be accident free. We can hope. I, I'm going to say this uh, just for the record. Mm -hmm. My understanding is it is Dr. Ferdinand Porsche. Porsche. That's okay. my understanding. Well, that's like how do you pronounce the capital of Kentucky? Is it Louisville or Louisville? I was raised saying Louisville, but I know people there say Louisville. And I was I've always been told it was Louisville. No, the capital of Kentucky is Frankfurt. So. Oh, you so, I knew ah. it. He got us. Oh, he did get us. You yeah. little sneak. Yeah. He's so proud of himself. Look at that smirk on his mm -hmm. face. Makes, uh, makes us want to put you in the trunk of an Audi. <laughs> <laughs> or a Porsche. <laughs> We've got to talk. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me go over here and. You're safer over there. <laughs> this was the sunset on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you scare me now. Just knock um, if it gets hot. Do what? Nothing. Okay. Knock uh, if it gets hot, he said. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And it's going to be a beautiful sunrise this morning. We, uh, we've got some clear skies out there right now. Temperatures are cool. Grab a jacket, but it's not cold. Uh, we've got some 30s, though, in the, in the hill country. And we are on the above normal side. Should still be in the low 40s at this time of year. There's a little bit of fog trying to show up. Gonzales, five miles visibility. A bunch of it down there in uh, Corpus Christi. And they go up 35 and toward New Braunfels, Austin. Just a hint of it. I don't think it's going to be a huge deal but just kind of watch out for a little, little bit here and there. As far as the rest of today, we're going to have a lot of sunshine throughout the day, and then clouds are going to come back in here. Uh, a few more of them by late this afternoon, and especially this evening. This computer model brings the rain in a little bit quicker, just a couple of scattered showers possible late tonight, but then especially overnight, we're going to get this uh, line of some showers, maybe even a thunderstorm to move through here in the wee hours tomorrow morning. And most of that, we'll still have some leftovers. The road's going to be wet tomorrow morning, and then a lot of that's going to be just out of here by probably about mid-morning. We're going to have plenty of sunshine then in the afternoon, and there is a bit of a front associated with that. So what that's going to do is it's not going to be a huge blast of cold air, but it's going to slowly get us back down to normal readings as the week progresses. The humidity, which is comfortable right now, is going to continue to go up going in through the afternoon as well as tomorrow morning. And then here comes the front that pulls in that drier air. So like I said, tomorrow and then Wednesday going to be beautiful. And going a little bit further into the future, here's a different computer model. Same situation for tonight and early tomorrow morning. We clear out on Wednesday and then clouds come back in Wednesday night into Thursday. And we have another chance of rain on Thursday. And this one's going to linger a little bit longer, even into Friday. And then that will finally get on out of here. And once again, we've got a really, really good looking weekend setting up for us. So forecast today, it is going to be a gorgeous day. Jacket this morning, you won't need it by this afternoon. You won't actually need it by probably noontime or late morning, 70s. So 
big warm up throughout the morning hours will gain about 20 or so. And then we top off at 75 later on today. Mostly sunny skies and a light breeze out of the east to southeast and going into uh, tomorrow. We'll start off in the mid 50s and get up to 70. So Slowly drop down in temperatures, some showers in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon, sunny 64 on Wednesday, only the 50s Thursday and Friday. And then it looks like uh, we set up for a good looking weekend. Kind of on the, on the downside, I wanted to mention this going into weather. Not a, this is the anniversary of uh, not a good occasions for NASA this week. Today is the anniversary of the Apollo 1 fire. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's the anniversary of Challenger. Saturday's the an anniversary of Columbia. Wow, was it re yeah. really the dates were all that close together. Mm -hmm. 67 for Apollo 1, 86 for Challenger in 2003, I think, for, uh, yeah. But all, right. all January. Well, I guess all no. Right in this, in this week. Right. Wow. The 27th through the 1st. 520, 49 degrees. The Grammys were the big, where the big awards were given out this weekend, but they weren't the only awards given out. We're going to tell you about some movies and shows that took home awards as well. Big three numbers, 905, Fireball 6, Daily 4, 9597, nine, also a Fireball of 6. And your cash five numbers, 16, 14, 16, 26, 27, 33, Lotto 22, 25, 29, 37, 39, 44, Powerball, which is up to 400 million, 299, 17, 36, 67, 18 was the Powerball with a power play of 2. The Grammys may have dominated the weekend entertainment wise, but they were far from the only awards given out in Tinseltown this weekend. CNN's David Daniel catches us up in the Hollywood Minute. In your own time, gentlemen. Must be something big if the channel's here. More awards for 1917. The top prize at the Directors Guild of America Awards went to Sam Mendes for his groundbreaking World War I epic. Mendes also won the DGA 20 years ago for American Beauty. I think there had to be more preparation and rehearsals for this film than I've ever experienced before. 1917 cinematographer Roger Deakins also picked up a prize, top honors at the American Society of Cinematographers Awards. Like Mendes, he's a favorite in his category for next month's Oscars. Uh, Mr. Klaus, you have a gift. You were meant for making toys. So I figured if you donate your old toys, I'll deliver them for free. Tonight. I go with you. There's no need for you to come with me, really. Tonight, then. The Santa Claus origin story Klaus was the surprise winner at the Annie Awards, celebrating the best in animation. The Netflix film took seven honors, including Best Animated Feature. The Annie winner has gone on to take the Oscar for Best Animated Film the last four years. Stay tuned. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Saw two movies this weekend. What'd you see? Saw the Nazi satire film Jojo Rabbit. Did not like it. Oh, okay. That's good Saw the new Guy Ritchie film The Gentleman with a huge cast, including uh, Hugh Grant, uh, What's Colin it about? Farrell. What's it about? Yeah. A bunch of hoodlums in, in England. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so it was an interesting cast, interesting story. This one actually held my, my interest. I watched one at home at Astra, which starred Brad, Brad Pitt, Pitt. And um, our dude who lives here, you know, Tommy Lee Jones. Okay. He stars in it as well. And I really liked it. My husband thought it was a little slow, but mm -hmm. I liked it. So if you're looking for something to watch at home, you can rent that one now. That's right. Let's take a look at the time right now on your Monday morning, 526, 49 degrees. Still ahead, the latest on a double shooting in a Northside apartment complex. We have the latest on what police are saying about the conditions of those shot. Plus, first legend David Robson sharing his thoughts on the passing of Kobe Bryant. And we're going to take a look at who took home the top honors at the 2020 Grammy Awards. Good morning. It's Monday, January 27th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. I had not a whole lot of fog or anything to deal with this morning. Traffic going okay? No, it actually looks great out there right now. So there's no delays in anyone's travel times, no accidents on the highways and hopefully keep your fingers crossed it'll stay that way. Yep. We can uh, sure hope. Mike, what do we wear out the door this morning? Jacket. And okay. then 
than a light shirt. jacket. It's not really cold. No, it's, it's not. Cold. It's not bone chilling. But uh, by later on this afternoon, you're going to want uh, just kind of a t-shirt, basically a t-shirt and flip flops later on today because we're going to see a huge warm up. We are in the uh, kind of 40s right now, even a couple of 30s on portions of the hill country. So about seven o'clock, say you know 50 ish or so with uh, those chilly conditions. And then later on today, absolutely beautiful, 75, plenty of sunshine. Clouds are going to start to increase tonight, and we do have a chance of some rain late tonight and then overnight into the first part of the day tomorrow. So uh, just to you know, kind of look ahead 24 hours tomorrow morning's commute is going to be somewhat on the uh, the damp side. This morning, however, we are going to have just a fantastic sunrise. Nothing but the clear skies out there right now. Uh, 49 in town, 43 in Bulverde, and there's those couple of 30s um, up there in parts of the hill country. And we are seeing a little bit of fog now. Victoria, three quarters of a mile. Gonzalez has dropped a little bit. There's hints of it up around New Braunfels. So just kind of watch out for some of this, especially off to the east later on. And over the next couple of hours as it may get a little bit thicker at times. Mold is on the high side. Of course, these are yesterday's readings. Updated count will come out in about an hour and a half or so just after seven o'clock. And Mountain Cedar is kind of on the, the lower side. And take a look ahead to the rest of the week. Of course, this afternoon, like we said, mostly sunny, 75. Then those showers late and then showers primarily first part of the day tomorrow and then more sunshine in the afternoon. We're going to slowly drop down in temperatures throughout the week as well. So so we're going to have plenty of sunshine on Wednesday and it'll be cooler and then cooler still Thursday and Friday with those showers and the weekend right now is looking fantastic. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Haven't had much up to this point. Anything right now, Marcus? No, actually things look pretty good as we take a look at the map. Mike, uh, right now, no accidents out there. Just gave the last check. Uh, highways clear of any incidents at this time. Let's take a look over at Transguide. You can see that here in the downtown vicinity, traffic is starting to pick up just a little bit, not too bad. North and southbound lanes of 35 are right here at the interchange with 37. Still looking pretty good. Just remember, put away those distractions once you head out this morning. Leslie. Thank you very much, Marcus. Two men who police say were watching television and found themselves involved in a real life drama. Someone shot them firing and to their north side apartment complex. Katrina Weber is live where it happened at West Avenue near Blanco. And you said one of the victims, rather, Katrina, is in critical condition. That's what police told us. One critical, one was stable. Both men taken to a hospital by ambulance. Now, police say that uh, one was shot in the face. The other one was hit in his back. Police told us that those two men were inside their apartment. The bullets tore right through their second floor window here at the Autumn Brook Apartments around 11 o'clock last night. The victims again were watching television when they were hit by the gunfire. Neighbors told police they saw a dark colored SUV speed away from here right after they heard those gunshots. Both men again rushed to a hospital by ambulance. Detectives did spend some time here looking for clues, but it seems that they have not made any arrests yet. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Well, with the passing of NBA legend Kobe Bryant suddenly on Sunday, many are still reacting to the news, including Spurs legend David Robinson. He shared his thoughts on the life of one of his most formidable opponents in his pro basketball career. You know, um, shocked, devastated. I, you know, for, for me personally, I mean, he's a member of our NBA family, right? Or he's our... He's a great, a legend. He's a, you know, somebody we've all admired and respected for a long time. So within the NBA family, just shocked and devastated. But from a worldwide perspective, you know, he's an icon. I mean, he's he he's this generation's Michael Jordan. You know, and and so, how do you even put into words what people feel when you lose? You know, the guy that you've been looking up to and the guy that's on a world stage has helped take the game to the next level. I, I mean, it's. Um, Hard to even put into words. We'll have more reaction from David Robinson, Spurs head coach Greg Popovich, DeMar DeRozan, even the KSAT Sports Guys reaction to Gobi's passing. You can find those stories and more in the instant replay section of our website at KSAT.com. Other headlines this morning, a case of coronavirus now confirmed in the state of Arizona. That means there are now at least five such cases in the U.S. right now, but the threat may be growing. CNN's John Lawrence reports health officials are issuing a warning about the fast-spreading illness. A game-changing announcement from China's health minister. People infected with the coronavirus can spread the disease before showing symptoms. The contagiousness of the patient is so much more evident 
there's a longer period of time where that person can spread the disease. Although some health officials question the statement, others believe it's better to err on the side of caution. I'm urging HHS, Health and Human Services, federal, to follow the CDC's proactive lead and declare a public formal health emergency for the coronavirus. And in doing so, it will unlock tens of millions of dollars for the CDC to access. The virus is confirmed in about a dozen countries, including China, the U.S. and France. And now there's a presumptive case in Canada. As a country, we've learned a lot since the SARS outbreak in 2003. And this has allowed our country and all levels of government to work very closely together to ensure that we are prepared. The director general of the World Health Organization tweeted Sunday that he's heading to Beijing to find out more about the coronavirus outbreak. My crystal ball says the next time the WHO committee uh, meets, I think it is likely that they will declare this a public health emergency of international concern. John Lawrence, KSAT 12 News. 12 people have died and 230 others have been injured in protests in Iraq during the past few days. That's according to the Independent High Commission for Human Rights of Iraq. Nine protesters were reportedly killed in Baghdad, three others in a southern city. More than 600 people have been killed in anti-government demonstrations since last October. Dozens of Iraqi security forces recently used live ammunition, reportedly, and tear gas to break up hundreds of anti-government protesters in Baghdad. 536, 49 degrees. A couple of the most anticipated movies so far this year still making some big bucks at the box office. We're going to break down the numbers for you. And next, Joe Biden leading the latest ABC poll heading into the Iowa caucus. We'll hear from the rest of the Democrats on the campaign trail. And live cam giving us a look outside. Mixed bag this week. We have sunshine. We have warm weather, a little bit of rain and cooler temperatures. Mike will break it down for you. Just about 540 to politics now in the all-out sprint to Iowa. Just eight days to that crucial first caucus. A new ABC News Washington Post national poll shows former Vice President Joe Biden topping the field with 28 percent among Democratic voters. ABC's Rachel Scott caught up with several candidates barnstorming the Hawkeye State this weekend. I am. I'm on my way. This weekend, the senators running for president dashing from the Capitol. How you doing? Right back onto the trail. Trying to make up precious lost days campaigning. The Iowa caucus is closing in and it is anybody's race. Good to be in Muscatine. Hey, Good not to be in Washington. <laughs> Senator Elizabeth Warren fresh off that key endorsement from the Des Moines Register. Today in Davenport, a voter asking how her plan would help her son with a learning disability. What will you do to help families like mine? Warren emotional, coming down from the stage for a hug. We need to invest in every one of our children. We're going to do this. This fight is worth having. But in the latest poll of Iowa voters, her rival, Senator Bernie Sanders, is ahead of the pack. We got people knocking on doors all over the state, people making telephone calls, and that's how I think you win elections. Former Vice President Joe Biden telling me he's already made his case to Iowans. What's your closing argument here in Iowa? You haven't heard it by now. It's not useful. Insisting he is the best chance to beat President Trump in November. When I look at Donald Trump, what he stands for, how he behaves, what he's done, my response is always the same. We are so much better than Donald Trump. So much better. And former Vice President Joe Biden says he's expecting to be a main focus at the Senate impeachment trial, but his strategy is to not engage. He says he is not worried about any political fallout. Rachel Scott, ABC News, Des Moines, Iowa. Monday morning time check, 541, 49 degrees. Still ahead, it was a big night for Billie Eilish at the 2020 Grammy Awards. Highlights of that coming up next. Singer Billie Eilish made Grammy history last night in Los Angeles. CNN's Rick Damicella has that story of the 2020 Grammy Awards. We're literally standing here heartbroken in the house that Kobe Bryant built. Music's biggest night began on a somber note. It's so hard to say goodbye. 
At the Staples Center in Los Angeles, reaction to the death of Kobe Bryant spurred an impromptu performance by host Alicia Keys and Boyz to Men and dedications to the NBA legend throughout the telecast. Singer Lizzo went into Grammy night with a leading eight nominations, ultimately winning a trio of awards, including Best Pop Solo Performance for Truth Hurts. But 18-year-old Billie Eilish was the night's big winner and history maker, taking home five awards, including Song of the Year for Bad Guy. Whoa, wow, 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 wow. Oh my God, so many other songs deserve this. Eilish is only the second artist after Christopher Cross in 1981 to sweep the big four categories of Best New Artist and Album, Record, and Song of the Year. She was just 17 at the time of the nominations, making her the youngest artist in Grammy history to be nominated in those categories in a single year. But I genuinely want to say... Um, I'm so grateful. Billy's brother Phineas O'Connell, who produces her music, shared her wins, and the family theme continued throughout the evening with Camila Cabello serenading her father. And Tyler the Creator bringing his mother on stage to celebrate his first Grammy win for Best Rap Album. You did a great job raising this guy. The night's third big winner was Gary Clark Jr., who took home three Grammys, including Best Rock Song for the protest anthem, This Land. I told you there goes a neighborhood. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. And as Mike was just mentioning, uh, don't forget Billie Eilish is going to be featured singing the new title song for the latest James Bond film, No Time to Die. A uh, very talented artist. Yes, ma'am. Let's check the roadways and see what's happening. Any new accidents to report? Well, as we take a look at the map, you can see that there's no accidents on the highway. So this morning has just been great so far. And we're hoping this trend continues throughout the rest of the morning commute. Right now, you can see slight slowdowns along Bandera Road between 1604 and 410, which we normally see because of those uh, stoplights. But other than that, there's really no slowdowns out there. So everyone traveling at least at the uh, speed limit right now and your travel times are well within the normal travel time range. Take a look here. We're seeing slight increases in the traffic. Highway 90 at 36th Street, but with all those lanes to choose from, there's no problems out there on the highways. We like to hear that. Thank you, Marcus. 49 degrees, so it's kind of uh, that zone that's kind of in between. It's a good jacket morning. Mm -hmm. I mean, doesn't have I to like be a jacket. You don't need your heavy coat. No, no, not a polar explorer type coat, but just something. <laughs> and, then, and it's going to be one to make sure kids' names in it because stuff's in the backpack later on this afternoon because we're going to be up in the mid 70s. So we're getting about the good 25 it's be or so. Warm this afternoon. Yeah, uh, up to 75. We were up to 80 yesterday afternoon, and then it's going to get slowly cooler as the week goes on. So you will need a jacket all day long. Come well, maybe Wednesday and especially uh, Thursday and Friday. More on that in a second. First of all, love this picture. Nice, beautiful cardinal enjoying the sunshine. That's great. I think those are pretty Aww, birds. very pretty. I love them. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Don't forget to keep sending those KSAC Connect pictures in. Um, love showing them in the morning and great way to also help to tell the story and see what's going on in and around town and around the area if there is anything to show, obviously. We're going to have a great sunrise this morning. Lots of clear skies out there. And these temperatures are, like we said, coolish, not bone chilling cold, although got some 30s up there in the hill country, 38 Kerrville, 39 in comfort. And um, it's about eight, uh, seven, eight degrees above normal right now here in town. And then obviously later on today, we're going to be well above normal. Fog is getting thicker up there around College State. Victoria, as well as Corpus Christi. Elsewhere, it's not bad. Uh, Gonzales at five miles visibility right now. So if anything, it's just going to be our extreme eastern counties. Just kind of keep a lookout for that around New Braunfels, maybe uh, Randolph, because that tends to get a little foggier sooner um, since, since there is some of that fog there around. Gonzales may start to creep a little bit westward. Forecast for today, plenty of sunshine. And then we are going to see uh, maybe a couple of showers popping up later on this evening. This is uh, one of the only computer models that really has not moving in here this soon in the mid to the latter portion of the evening tonight. Then that front's going to move on through here and that's going to touch off more showers and maybe even a couple of thunderstorms overnight and for the commute tomorrow morning. So it is going to be a wet commute tomorrow morning. Then most of that's going to be out of here by probably mid morning. At least we'll see plenty of sunshine in the afternoon. And what return of the humidity we get today is then going to go away as that 
front kind of moves on through here and that'll pull down much drier. So it's going to be beautiful in the afternoon tomorrow as well as on Wednesday and it's kind of setting us up for a cooler morning on Wednesday. A little further into the future, different computer model, but same solution for tomorrow with some rain starting off. Wednesday looks fantastic and then the clouds come back in here Thursday. So another mm, potentially wet commute Thursday morning and this time around the rain chances will be sticking around through a good part of the day Thursday as well as Friday. Obviously this one has most of it down there to the southeast and that'll be most of the day Friday. Then we clear out and that's setting us up for a good looking weekend uh, with nice pleasant temperatures. I mean just another prize winning weekend. So the forecast today is going to be up to 70 at noon with plenty of sunshine around here. Maybe a couple of more clouds later on this afternoon. 75 for high temperatures, so about 10 above normal again today. And then tomorrow, late tonight, early tomorrow, we have the rain chances. Mid 50s, but then I say only up to 70. Slightly cooler as time goes on. 64 on Wednesday. Plenty of sunshine. Uh, chilly starts and staying coolish. And then only the 50s once we get into Thursday and Friday. So that's when you want to keep your jacket handy and back to the upper 60s Saturday, back to the mid 70s by Sunday. All over the place. We like it. Mm -hmm. Good right. looking weekend, though. I'm so excited about Saturday. Yes. The cattle drive is going to be so much fun. We hope you join us out there. And the KSAT Corral. The KSAT Corral, which right. is the big party from 9 a.m. until 1. We're you, all going to be there. You looking can go online and uh, get tickets for get that. Tickets. So. Big <laughs> family event, perfect weather. We'd love to see you out there. Come say hi. 550, 49 degrees. Up next, a look at what movies were top at the box office this weekend. Let's take a look at some lottery numbers here, including two fireballs of six. Pick three, nine zero five, fireball six, daily four, nine five nine seven, fireball six. And your cash five numbers, 14, 16, 26, 27, 33. Lotto numbers, 22, 25, 29, 37, 39, 44. And Powerball up to 400 million, everybody, two nine. 17, 36, 67, 18 was the power ball and the power play up to. Several movies are still making some big money at the box office, even after spending several weeks in theaters. Seen as David Daniel has, have rather has the latest numbers. Jumanji The Next Level dropped one level to fifth place on ticket sales of $7.9 million. Matthew McConaughey and The Gentleman made a fourth place debut, opening with $11 million. Doolittle stayed in third place, adding $12.5 million to its kitty. Oscar favorite 1917 kept second place, crossing the 100 million mark domestically with a $15.8 million weekend. Whoa, where you get all the toys? Bad Boys for Life easily kept the top spot, earning $34 million for a 10 day total of 121 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I'm the bait. This afternoon, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences will be hosting this year's nominees at the annual Oscars luncheon. The event has been held at the Beverly Hilton for nearly four decades, but a shortened Oscar schedule meant a change of venue. The Oscars, by the way, air right here on KSAT 12 coming up on Sunday, February 9th. Tragedy, unimaginable heartbreak. Kobe Bryant, his 13-year-old daughter, among the lives lost in a helicopter crash. This morning, GMA is there in Southern California with breaking new reports. Good morning, America, this morning. Let's take a look at the Spurs schedule for the rest of the week uh, following their loss to the Raptors last night. They travel to Chicago to take on the Bulls tonight at 7. Wednesday, back in town to host the Jazz. Then they uh, are stay at home taking on the Charlotte Hornets coming up Saturday night at 8 o'clock. An Ohio couple is about to become a household of seven, a pregnant wife expecting quintuplets. After Hannah and Jacob Merton married in 2017, they felt they were ready to try for kids. They went to a specialist, started fertility meds, and recently a doctor delivered stunning news. At first, the ultrasound revealed Hannah's wish, twins, babies A and B, but then there were more, C, D, and E. Hannah is now 19 weeks long with 
Three girls and two boys still working on names. Their due date in June, but the quints will most likely be delivered in March or April. They say they are nervous, but have lots of family willing to help. What a blessing. Right now it's three till on your Monday morning, 49 degrees. Many of us continue to exercise as part of our 2020 goals, but improperly working out can lead to injury, putting you on the sideline. In our next hour, we'll see ways to stay fit and stay healthy. As we go to break, Transguide, we are seeing traffic building. There's 10 at Frio. Much more to come on GMSA. Stick around. Two men are in the hospital and a shooter is on the loose after bullets flew through a west side apartment. Right now, police are questioning neighbors to find the people responsible. I mean, just a, a good guy, just a, a, a smart guy, kind, um, you know, and my interactions with him have always been uh, the very best. And Coach Pop. David Robinson and others speaking about the life of Kobe Bryant. We'll hear from more of the legendary Spurs players coming up a little later on. And taking a look outside with live cam. Yeah, it's a little bit chilly out there this morning, but not downright cold. And we're going to see a lot of sunshine. Mike is standing by with the forecast. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. It is Monday. It is January 27th, and good morning to you. Thank you for being with us this morning, everybody. Let's bring Mike right into it. We got up to 80 degrees yesterday. Yep. Yep, beautiful weekend. You know, we had a little fog in the morning mm -hmm. and some of those were sprinkles early Saturday, but uh, yeah, it's just fantastic. Kind of a continuation of what we had over the weekend today. We've got lots of clear skies out there and it's going to be almost that warm later on. We are on the above normal side. To, should be in the low 40s. We're at 49 right now. 42 Boulevard. It's jacket weather though, especially out there in parts of the uh, hill country. Not a, you know, it's not bone chilling cold, but just cold enough and there's there is some humidity so it's sort of that dampish cool but then it make sure it's one of those jackets that kids can stuff in a backpack because it's going to warm up very nicely today we do have some fog off to the east corpus christi victoria up around college station some in gonzales and a little bit up around austin new braunfels had some last hour just nine miles visibility but just kind of keep an eye out in our eastern counties over the next couple of hours molds on the high side these are yesterday's readings mountain cedar is moderate. Now we do have a couple. First of all, um, hopefully mold goes down a little bit to, because we're going to have some drier air in place and have had it yesterday and today. Mountain Sierra, we do have a front moving through a couple of them this week, so we'll have to see how that uh, pans out if we're really kind of coming to the end of the season. 50 uh, right now. We're going to stay fairly, fairly steady for the next couple of hours and then big warm up throughout the morning hours. We'll make it up to 70 already at noon. Plenty of sunshine. A couple more clouds then later on this afternoon. Just a few of them out there, but a good looking day, 75 degrees. And then the clouds going to be thickening up later on tonight. We'll talk about some rain chances as well. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Marcus Trujillo. And you haven't had a heck of a lot to talk about so far. No, we do have one accident that's just coming in. So we're going to have to go up to the far north side, close to the rim at 1604. So we're going all the way out there to 1604. Those westbound main lanes right there at the exit for Lock Hill Selma. That's where we're getting reports of a major accident out there. So we have a number of vehicles, emergency vehicles rather, responding to that accident out there. So just remember westbound 1604, the Lock Hill Selma exit, the number of emergency vehicles responding to a major accident. Now let's take a look outside through Transguide 281 at 410 up there by the airport. Traffic up there still looking great both on the connector ramps and down below for eastbound and westbound lanes of 410. Leslie. Thanks, Marcus. New this morning, two people are in the hospital after being shot in their own home overnight. Police say the two men were watching television in an apartment in the 100,700 block of West Avenue. Bullets came flying through the window of their second story apartment, hitting one of the men in the face, the other in the back. Police say neighbors saw a dark SUV drive off after the shooting. Both men were taken to University Hospital, one in critical condition. Police are still searching for the shooters. 
We now know the name of a man responsible for a deadly car crash this weekend. San Antonio police say this man, 18-year-old Stephen Medina, has been arrested and now faces intoxication manslaughter charges. SAPD says when they got to the scene in the 3600 block of Culebra yesterday, they found the driver of the vehicle passed out and highly intoxicated and a woman dead outside the vehicle. They tell us that it appears she may have been dragged, but there's no evidence she was hit by a vehicle. San Antonio police and crime stoppers of San Antonio need your help to find a person wanted in a murder case. Take a look. This is Gilbert Rocho. Police say back in November of 2016, a road rage incident led to a deadly shooting on Hebner Road near Northwest Military Drive. SAPD says the suspect fired multiple shots into a vehicle, killing Rocho. Police need your help to identify and locate the person in these photos. If you have information, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. He was one of the highest scoring NBA players of all time and just starting his second act after retiring from the game. Kobe Bryant's life was cut short Sunday at the age of 41. Bryant was not only synonymous with the Los Angeles Lakers organization, but also the city itself. CNN's Daryl Forges has more on the basketball legend. Just over my shoulder, just above this hill in Calabasas, is where the investigation is taking place from the crash from yesterday. And as you can imagine, a day after, many are still coming to grips with losing Kobe Bryant. I still am in disbelief and shock. That's how many are reacting to the shocking death of Kobe Bryant in the helicopter crash Sunday. Fans, friends, and fellow players around the world mourning one of the greatest players to ever grace the basketball court. Today is, is one of the saddest days in my lifetime. It seems like a bad, like a bad dream. Bryant and his 13-year-old daughter Gianna perished along with seven others when the helicopter they were traveling in crashed in the mountains outside Los Angeles. Also killed in the crash, Orange Coast College baseball coach John Altabelli, his wife Carrie, and daughter Alyssa, Altabelli's brother says. And according to her husband's Facebook page, assistant girls basketball coach Christina Mauser. Two other passengers and the pilot have not been named. We're doing everything we can to confirm identifications and uh, give uh, closure to the families involved. The group was traveling to the girls' basketball game in Thousand Oaks, California at the Mamba Sports Academy. Bryant was remembered Sunday night at the it's Grammys, so held at the Staples Center, where Bryant left so much on the court. To say goodbye to what we had. And the NTSB is expected to be out here later on today. Meanwhile, Bryant leaves behind a wife and three children, including a baby that was born back in June. In Calabasas, California, I'm Daryl Forges. Back here at home, Erica Hernandez joining us now with more on reaction from around the world. Good morning, Erica. Hi, good morning, guys. Well, many talk taking to social media to express their disbelief and sharing their condolences. Right now on KSAT.com, we have several articles on those reactions. First, from the Spurs as they played yesterday afternoon against the Toronto Ramp Raptors. A moment of silence was held before the game started, and then both teams started the game making 24-second violations to honor Bryant, who wore number 24. After the game, we heard from players, including DeMar DeRozan. Learning everything I've, I've learned basketball-wise from Kobe, what he meant to the game, the inspiration that he brought to the world. Um, not just that, um, his daughter, I'm a father, um, I can't imagine something like that, you know, happening. As for comments on social media, Manu Ginobili tweeted only the word devastated. Tony Parker tweeted, I'm heartbroken by this news. You were a true legend and friend. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant, my thoughts and prayers to his wife and kids, hashtag legend. And from Matt Bonner, my heart breaks. Thank you for everything you gave us on and off the court. Thank you for my nickname. Thank you for everything you taught us about Mamba mentality, a true icon and champion, praying hard for your family. Rest in peace, Black Mamba. Now we have much more online right now with more reaction and the latest into the crash investigation. Mark, Leslie. All right, thank you very much.
Erica, there's a coordinated effort to trace the potential spread of the Wuhan coronavirus in Los Angeles. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, L.A. County Department of Public Health, and the L.A. Airport all working together. Los Angeles has one of five confirmed cases of coronavirus in the country. It comes after China's health minister said people with in, who are infected with the coronavirus can spread the disease before showing symptoms. Civil rights icon Nathaniel Jones has died at the age of 93. He worked with former Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall during the Brown versus Board of Education case that ended school segregation. Jones even oversaw the election of Nelson Mandela in South Africa in the 1990s, which helped that nation end apartheid. Former President Jimmy Carter made Jones a federal judge in 1979. The Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, will visit the White House this week. President Donald Trump says he plans to release his long-awaited plan for the Middle East before meeting with Netanyahu on tomorrow. The plan is meant to bring peace in the ongoing conflict between Israel and Palestine. However, a Palestinian negotiator says there has been no communication with the United States, despite President Trump saying he included their input. 609, 49 degrees. An iconic phone is back. We're going to take a look at the brand new Razor foldable phone. Big night for music as the Grammy Awards celebrated the best in the biz. You will see who wound up on top for the night. And live cam giving us a look outside. Chance of rain in the forecast. Mike has details of that coming up. Welcome back at 613. It was a night to celebrate music's biggest names, but the Grammys were overshadowed by the death of Kobe Bryant. ABC's Andrea Fujii shows us how stars paid tribute to him as well as honored the big winners. Tonight is for Kobe. It was a night of music, but also tributes for basketball great Kobe Bryant. The 62nd annual Grammy Awards held at LA's Staples Center, where Bryant played with the Lakers for 20 years. The show's tone was somber. We love you, Kobe. But big names still rocked the house. I'm crying, cause I love it was a big night for artist Billie Eilish, who took home Record of the Year, Best New Artist, Album of the Year, and Song of the Year for Bad Guy. For Nipsey Hussle was posthumously awarded the Best Rap Sung Collaboration, along with John Legend and DJ Khaled for their song, Higher. Music's biggest night comes as the recently ousted Recording Academy CEO and president, Deborah Dugan, claims the Grammy voting process is a boys' club and accuses the Academy of tampering with nominations, voting, and even who gets to perform at the show. I hate that I'm in this situation uh, because I'd much rather be here talking about the artists and the music. But um, I can't help but have to say there are conflicts of interest. But the Academy claims it was Dugan who created a toxic and intolerable work environment and engaged in abusive and bullying conduct. The Recording Academy says they immediately launched independent investigations to review both Ms. Dugan's potential misconduct and her subsequent allegations. Meanwhile, Dugan denies their allegations. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. Time check 6.15. Time to check on the roadways and see how your traffic is shaping up on this Monday morning. Well, we do have that accident on the far north side. We're starting to get a little bit of a backup, as you can see. Look at the very, very top of your screen, folks. Right next to where it says the rim, you can see westbound lanes of 1604 starting to slow down. So it slows down uh, well before the Lock Hill Selma exit, and that's before Northwest Military Highway. You can see, let's take a look from TransGuide. You can uh, get a better view of just how bad it is out there right now. We could, there we go. There it is. There's the backup east, westbound 1604 right there at that Lock Hill Selma exit. So uh, down to just one lane. Hopefully we'll get this uh, cleared up or at least get those vehicles moved off the roadway so we can open up that second lane of travel uh, from uh, 1604 and 281 over towards the I-10 area. Uh, mostly just two lanes, just a few spots where it opens up temporarily for a third lane. So. As soon as we can get back to the two lanes, it'll be a lot better for everyone out there on the road. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. So a little bit of rain in the forecast tomorrow. Yeah, a slight chance for some rain. And then again on Thursday, temperatures will can slowly drop down. Uh, so it is going to be chillier in the afternoons by the end of the week. But this month has been, would you say, on the warm side? Yeah, yes. Absolutely. How cold have we gotten this month, you know? As far as coldest morning low kind of here, thing? Here in town, yeah. Mm. Oh, it seems like we've had freezing at least once. No. No? Not yet. Got mm. down to 34 one time on the 8th. And we're on track 
to not have any freezing temperatures in January. Wow. And Unusual. the last time that has happened, take a look at the uh, graphic, was way back in 1939. So that's no freeze in the actual month of January. Now, the what's interesting is the latest first freeze then was so that we still could have some freezing temperatures was that same year of 1932 and it didn't happen until March of that year. And if you recall back uh, a couple of months or a couple of years ago, we didn't hit freezing in the 2015 16 winter if you will, winter season up until the 23rd of January. And like I said, so we're obviously on track for not hitting freezing right now. Now, as far as the last freeze, the earliest that's ever happened is the 4th of January. So if we weren't to hit freeze throughout the this year, in the next couple of months, we would set a new record for that. The average last freeze is February 4th and the latest has been in April 3rd. And that was uh, 20 or excuse me, about uh, how many years ago? <laughs> the 80s, I can't do my math very quickly, but that was just a fairly recently 1987. So like I said, we are on track to not hit freezing so far for the month, but history kind of shows that we probably are going to be hitting it uh, though in next month or even after that. Lots of clear skies right now and we're going to have a beautiful sunrise. Nowhere near freezing. As a matter of fact, we are well above normal by a good 7, 8 degrees right now in the uh, 30s and 40s. Fog in our extreme eastern counties. Gonzales has a little bit and there have been hints of it up to the north and that's pretty much about it. So I don't think we're gonna have to really worry about that too much this morning. We are gonna have a lot of sunshine today and then a few more clouds late this afternoon. This computer model brings in a few showers later on tonight and then the kind of main area of rain coming in overnight and the first part of the day tomorrow. So it is gonna be a wet commute tomorrow and that'll stick around for Again, most of the morning commute, but then by about mid morning, it's looking like most all of that's going to be out of here. We're going to have plenty of sunshine then in the afternoon. We will see an increase in the humidity that's going to help to feed some of those showers. But then there's that front that moves on through here and that pulls in the drier air and somewhat cooler air as well. And so that's why temperatures are slowly going to be going downhill as we go in toward the rest of the week. This computer model also has the same situation for rain tomorrow. Great tomorrow afternoon, Wednesday, but then more rain Thursday as well as on Friday and cloud cover is going to help to hold those those high temperatures down, but it's going to prevent us from hitting freezing 70 today at noon. Sunny skies, gorgeous day, big warm up throughout the morning. We gain about again 20 degrees or so between now and noon and then 75 for a high temperature, which is about 10 above normal tomorrow. 55 starting off and then 70 for a high. We get down to 41 Wednesday morning and Thursday morning and we're not going to be really cooling down any more than that. The cloud cover is going to help to act like a blanket then Thursday and Friday mornings and we will be down to right around 42 on Saturday. So obviously in the hill country, maybe close to freezing Wednesday morning and Saturday morning, but uh, not here in town and another great weekend is shaping up. All right, we're spoiled rotten on those weekends. Mm -hmm. Thanks. 619, 49 degrees. 2020 could be the year to do it for the vine once again. We'll see how the co-founders of the once popular app are planning a comeback. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. Skin Sin number 17. Too many after parties. New Neutrogena Bright Boost with Dullness Fighting Neoglucosamine. Boost cell turnover by 10 times for instantly brighter skin. Bright Boost, Neutrogena. When life changes, so do your taxes. That's a reason to switch to Jackson Hewitt. Our tax returns come with a free lifetime accuracy guarantee. Life may change. Your lifetime accuracy guarantee won't. Tax prep guaranteed at Jackson Hewitt. When it comes to parenting, you're a pro. You know reflexes are key. You know your kid doesn't step around puddles and wet shoes. Not cool. You know what else isn't cool? Those cheap leaky diapers. Because with Loves, you get the pro-level leak protection you're looking for. Loves. Parent like a pro. In this morning's GMA First Look, Kobe Bryant off the court from his retirement. Are you really ready to let her go? I am. I am. But the thing, I'm, I'm carrying this with me no matter what. You know what I mean? But 
internally, my love, my passion, everything that I've learned from it is always going to be with me. To his Oscar win. Talk to me about the moment, Kobe Bryant, that you heard your name called out at the Academy Awards. I, I sat there for a minute because I couldn't believe like this is actually happening. And I looked at my wife who just gave me this big smile. To becoming a writer. Why did you decide to write this book about a girl playing tennis? Well, I have four girls at home. And uh, you know, I want to make sure it's important that they you know, see characters that look like them and that are also athletes. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the latest tributes and talk live with Scottie Pippen. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. You can now pre-order the Motorola Razr foldable phone. The 04 version of Motorola Razr became an icon in the industry and still one of the best-selling phones ever. However, this new one costs $1,500 and it's only available from Verizon. Porsche is about to air its first Super Bowl ad in 23 years. It features the company's Taycan electric car, which comes to, which seems to have been stolen from Porsche's museum in Germany. A Hollywood-style chase follows while guards drive older model Porsches. The ad will air in the first quarter of Sunday's big game. Six-second videos could be making a comeback. One of Vine's co-founders has launched Byte on Android and iOS. The video app will go head-to-head -head with TikTok. A partner program to pay creators is supposed to come down soon. Your time now, 625, and it's 49 degrees outside. The Senate impeachment trial for President Trump continues today. We'll see what to expect as the president's legal team prepares to make their defense. The basketball community mourning the death of Kobe Bryant. We're going to hear from the Spurs great who remembers playing with the NBA legend. And as we head to a trans guide right now, we've got a fairly normal traffic flow inbound and outbound there at 281. 1604 at Military, there is one of the problem areas that Marcus has his eye on. Time saver traffic is coming up. The action on TV takes a backseat to the real-life trouble at home for two men. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Both were shot here at their north side apartment complex. I'll have that story. A yet-to-be-published book is ramping up Democrats' demands to allow new evidence be admitted in the impeachment trial. I'm Andrew Dimbert on Capitol Hill. I'll have that story coming up. I mean, just a, a good guy, just a, a, a smart guy, kind, um, you know, and my interactions with him have always been uh, the very best. The Admiral David Robinson sharing his thoughts on the death of NBA legend Kobe Bryant. We'll hear from reactions from around the league and here at home as the basketball community continues to mourn Kobe's death. And taking a look outside with live cam, Mike standing by with your work week and school week forecast. Hope you slept well last night or had a good overnight shift. Good morning to you. It is Monday. It is January 27th. How's Monday traffic shaping up? Well, pretty good. We do have that one major accident causing some problems on 1604. So if you normally travel 1604 westbound between 281 and I-10, uh, before you get to Lock Hill Selma, you will have a little bit of a slowdown until we get those vehicles off the roadway. All right. Thank you, sir. Our spring-like trend is continuing around here in South Texas. Yeah, 80 yesterday, 75 later on today. We're starting off. It's, it's jacket weather, though. Yeah, except certainly in the morning. It, it's cool, and um, it's going to be a beautiful sunrise again this morning, and then later on this afternoon, plenty of sunshine. Like I said, 75 with a couple more clouds. Then we do have some rain chances late tonight. Tomorrow morning's commute is going to be a, a whole different uh, story. First of all, look outside right now with live cam and no hint of the uh, sunrise as of yet, but it's going to be about another hour or so before it uh, starts to come up. 42 in Helotus, 41 Bandera, a pair of 38s up there in the uh, Hill Country, Kerrville Comfort, and 46 right now in New Braunfels. There's a little bit of fog. Gonzales has some, and then further off to the east, we've got some uh, thicker fog out there, but it's pretty much confined well out there to the east, so we're not going to have to worry about that too much. Molds is on the high side. Mountain Cedar is moderate. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out in just about, uh, I'll say, half an hour or so, just after 7 o'clock and hopefully mold goes down given the fact we've got relatively drier air in place and mountain cedar is going to be interesting because we do have a couple of fronts coming through here uh, one tomorrow or late tonight tomorrow and then another one toward the end of the week so I wonder what that's going to do to mountain cedar kind of wait and see situation more on the weekend forecast coming up in a couple of minutes right now time saver traffic and 
Can we put, uh, is there any way to put our other graphics in there? We don't know how to do yeah, that. We can Let's take, take map full. full. There we go. So as we switch over to the maps, uh, we can see that right now, uh, 1604 there at Lock Hill Selma exit westbound lanes, still down to just one lane that's available. Uh, major accident out there. You can see there are all the flashing lights. Uh, as we try to get those vehicles off the roadway. So only one lane open between 281 and I-10 for those westbound main lanes of 1604. Leslie. Thank you very much, Marcus. Trouble has barged in on two men inside a north side apartment. San Antonio police say someone fired shots that went right through the window, hitting both of them. Katrina Weber's live where it happened, which is on West Avenue near Blanco. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that they were on the second floor. Do police know how the shooter was able to target them? Well, that's probably part of what investigators are trying to piece together. We don't know yet whether that shooter may have climbed the stairs, then fired the shots, or if somehow those shots were fired from below. Now, the only clue that investigators have had so far has come from neighbors here at the Autumn Brook Apartments. They saw someone speed off in a dark SUV. Those shots rang out around 11 o'clock last night and tore through a window of the second floor apartment. Two men told police they were inside watching TV when they suddenly were hit by gunfire. One was hit in his back and appeared to be walking around a little bit out here. The other suffered a gunshot wound to his face, but both were rushed to a hospital. The police told us that one of the victims was in critical condition when he went to the hospital. The other one was stable. It does not appear that police have made any arrests yet. Reporting live from the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. In Washington, D.C., the Senate impeachment trial resumes this afternoon. Reports say an upcoming book by the president's former national security advisor, John Bolton, claims the president personally tied Ukraine aid to a Biden investigation. Well, that directly contradicts the president's defense team's arguments. ABC's Andrew Dimbert is on Capitol Hill with the latest. Democrats want one witness to testify more than any other, former National Security Advisor John Bolton. A new report by the New York Times shows just how critical to the case he may be. According to the Times, four weeks ago, Bolton submitted a manuscript to the White House of an unpublished book he wrote called The Room Where It Happened. The Times says Bolton detailed an August 2019 conversation with Trump, claiming the president told Bolton personally that he wanted to continue withholding military aid to the Ukraine until officials there launched investigations into Trump's rivals, including Joe Biden. ABC News has not independently reviewed the manuscript. This reported firsthand account undercuts what the president's lawyers argued in the impeachment trial over the weekend. There is simply no evidence anywhere that President Trump ever linked security assistance to any investigations. President Trump flatly denying the new report. I never told John Bolton that the aid to the Ukraine was tied to investigations into the Democrats, including the Bidens, and released the military aid to Ukraine without any conditions or investigations and far ahead of schedule. Democrats feel this only boosts their case for additional witnesses and documents. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer pleading to some moderate Republicans on Twitter to go against party lines and vote to introduce new evidence in the trial. John Bolton has the evidence. It's up to four Senate Republicans to ensure John Bolton, Mick Mulvaney, and the others with direct knowledge of President Trump's actions testify in the Senate trial. Bolton has said he would testify if subpoenaed by the Senate. Meanwhile, the trial resumes this afternoon. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Capitol Hill. KSAT will be live streaming the impeachment trial on KSAT.com and KSAT TV starting today at noon. If you want to watch our newscast, continue to do so right here on KSAT 12. And tune in to GMSA tomorrow morning to hear the top moments from today's defense arguments. There are no words that can describe uh, how everybody feels about it. So uh, we all think about the family. And the process that they're going to be going through now. Uh, that's where all our thoughts should be. That was Coach Pop talking about the loss of Kobe Bryant after yesterday's Spurs game. He and fans around the world remembering Kobe not just for his determination on the basketball court, court but for his larger-than-life personality and his fierce devotion to family. Meanwhile, the investigation into the helicopter crash that killed Bryant and eight others is now getting underway. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest.
This morning, new clues about the crash that took the life of NBA legend Kobe Bryant. That column of smoke was first seen just before 10 a.m. South of 101 helicopter went down. Emergency crews rushed to the remote scene. They did a search of the area for survivors. Unfortunately, all the survivors on board were determined to have been perished. Now, as officials clear away debris at the crash site, which could take days, investigators are working to piece together why the helicopter went down, killing Bryant along with his 13-year-old daughter and all seven others on board. The trip was supposed to take less than half an hour, but nearly 45 minutes after takeoff, witnesses saw the chopper begin to struggle. Well, I heard a, uh, a helicopter just flying just way too low, and I heard like a loud thud noise. We can see that the aircraft hit at a very high speed. It was not controlled. There was no attempt to land. And so whatever happened here was catastrophic and happened in those last 15 seconds of flight. Visibility at the time of the crash was so bad, the LAPD had grounded police helicopters at the time. But the sheriff's department says it's too soon to know whether fog played a role. Those closest to Bryant and his daughter described being crippled by the news. A lot of us broke down. It was just like everybody started getting on their knees. Known for his love of basketball, former President Obama stunned, tweeting Kobe was a legend on the court and just getting started in what would have been just as meaningful a second act. Memorials across the country growing by the hour, the biggest in Los Angeles where fans say Kobe was larger than life. Overnight, other NBA legends like Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar paid tribute. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Eric Hernandez joining us now in studio with more reaction to the passing of Kobe Bryant. And Erica, yesterday many took to social media as the news was confirmed. What are you hearing from people in San Antonio? Disbelief. I mean, we're seeing it across the board everywhere is the disbelief. And many are remembering the Spurs and Lakers rivalry, which was one many of us over the past decade have watched closely. A big part of that rivalry was playing against Kobe Bryant. Current and former Spurs players reacting yesterday to this tragic news, including legendary Spur David Robinson. From a worldwide perspective, you know, he's an icon. I mean, he's he, he's this generation's Michael Jordan, you know, and, and so how do you even put into words what people feel when you lose, you know, the guy that you've been looking up to and the guy that's on a world stage has helped take the game to the next level? I, I mean, it's um, hard to even put into words. Now, earlier this morning, we shared reactions from other Spurs players, but we have reaction from all over the league and world as well, including a statement made from Kobe's former coach, Phil Jackson, and NBA commissioner, Adam Silver. For more on the death of Kobe Bryant and his daughter, Gianna, head to our website, ksat.com. Mark Leslie. Thank you, Erica. 639, 49 degrees. Many of us are continuing to exercise as part of our 2020 goals, but improperly working out can lead to injury, putting you on the sideline. We're going to find out ways to stay fit and healthy after the break. Up in the Adam on this Monday morning. Thank you so much for starting your day with us here on Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back. 643. An injury can put your fitness goals on hold. Our Devin Clark reports on some common mistakes and how you can avoid them. You run, you lift, you bike, but do muscle aches and pains keep you from keeping a consistent workout routine? The way people injure themselves is that they'll go to the gym, they feel really good, and they work out super duper hard, but they end up pulling and straining muscles because they may not be using proper form. If your form is wrong, crunches and bicycle crunches can lead to neck injuries. They're actually putting a lot of strain on their neck and they're not working their core. So Look up instead of forward back, and don't pull on your head. Down. You can take a towel and then support your neck this way. Also, squats with incorrect form can cause stress on the back, resulting in injury, especially if you're squatting with weights. Practice good form by making a squat stick. Tie a handle to a secure object. And I get, let them get about feet shoulder width and I have them pretend like they're going to go water skiing. And then all they do is they sit down and they stand up. And experts say that shorter women should find a gym that has smaller machines because most exercise equipment is built for an average man's height. For GMSA, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Work it, Devin, work it. Devin putting in the work. 
right. Nice reporter involvement. <laughs> it's 644 right now. Let's check the roadways. <laughs> How's that accident shaping up on 1604? <clears throat> that accident's still in place. Now we have another accident. This one's going to be on eastbound Highway 90 right at General McMullen. Not quite uh, causing the traffic congestion uh, that we see up north, but nonetheless, this one just came in. So that's liable to change here in the next few minutes. This is eastbound or westbound rather Highway 90, excuse me, westbound 1604 at Lock Hill Summer. So you can see traffic back it up uh, quite a bit, almost uh, all the way back to Blanco at this point. Uh, right now, only one lane open uh, due to that major accident. As you can see, uh, even though we have long lines of traffic, you still have folks on the access road trying to use that entrance ramp right before the accident. Best bet is stay on the access road. You'll be able to make better headway, gain a little bit more ground. And there's another entrance ramp just past the Lock Hill Summer exit anyway. so. Now, those folks are going right into a dead stop. Oh, that's yes, a mess. They are. Not the way you want to start your Monday. Not at all. Boy, Devin has enough motivation for all of us, doesn't yes, he? Yes, yeah. he does. I felt like I got a workout and just watching him. <laughs> and that's the thing. You go there and, like you said, you know, you feel like, hey, wow. And then the next day it's like, oh, Ooh, yeah. I can't work. Yeah. Because most of us ain't 25 anymore. So, um, speak for yourself. I love the title of this, the caption. Peace, <laughs> Leslie. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, it is. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's a beautiful. It is, it is just so peaceful looking at the water like that. It's uh, not bad looking at this sunrise. It's going to be spectacular again this morning. 49 in town, 44 in Hondo, 47 Floresville. Temperatures are a little bit above normal by uh, 5, 7 degrees, something like that. And uh, even a couple of uh, some 30s going out I-10 and toward the hill country. There's still that little bit of fog, Gonzales, and then more of it off to the east and a hint of it around Austin, but that's the only thing. So fog is again not going to be a, a huge deal this morning. And as far as the humidity, it will start to all my numbers went away. It will start to go up as we go into uh, this afternoon as well as this evening, and that's going to help to feed more clouds and some showers that are going to be coming on in here late tonight and tomorrow. Then all that dry air moves on in here during the day tomorrow, and that's uh, with that in the passage of that front. So that's going to clear things out very nicely in the afternoon. Tomorrow it's going to be gorgeous on Wednesday. It'll be cooler though Wednesday morning with that dry air and the clear skies will keep temperatures milder tomorrow morning just because of the extra cloud cover around here. And as far as rain, Rain. This computer model does try and bring the rain in later on this evening out ahead of kind of the main front and that's going to come through in the morning hour. So it is going to be a wet commute tomorrow and then that'll stick around throughout uh, about mid morning and by mid to late morning by noon. Most of that's going to be on out of here. We'll still have some showers well off to the east, but then that starts the, uh, the clearing process. Different computer model, same situation. Uh, tomorrow as well as Wednesday. Beautiful. And then going into Thursday, we have that next chance for some rain and that's going to be sticking around into Friday and then by late Friday, that's going to start to uh, clear on out. So here's what's going to be going on as far as temperatures and everything the next week. Here's the front that moves through tomorrow. We get a little bit cooler though in behind that. The next system comes through on Thursday and in behind that, Look what's in store for the weekend. We've got this nice northwesterly flow, and that means some fairly dry air. That means pleasant temperatures. It's going to be about normal or maybe even a little bit on the, the warmer side once we get back into the weekend. But the trend this week, though, even though we're warm today, is going to be for temperatures to uh, make a slow decline. 70 today at noon, sunny skies, and then mostly sunny later on today. A couple more clouds are going to start to work their way in here. And then more clouds tonight, maybe a couple of showers late and then especially overnight into the first part of the day tomorrow, basically just the morning tomorrow. 70 for a high temperature, starting off at 55. Then with those clear skies and uh, dry air, 41. So pretty chilly Wednesday morning, about normal mid 60s, only the 50s Thursday and Friday. And then we go into the weekend. Another fantastic weekend. A few more clouds on Sunday. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Time check right now, 649. We're at 49 degrees. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all in the top five of the most used social media apps, with each exceeding over 75 million monthly users. But they can take a lot of time out of your day if you aren't aware of it. Join us tomorrow for GMSA. We're going to take a look at ways you can avoid wasting your time.
tragedy, unimaginable heartbreak. Kobe Bryant, his 13-year-old daughter, among the lives lost in a helicopter crash. This morning, GMA is there in Southern California with breaking new reports. Good morning, America, this morning. They never saw it coming. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Two men who police say had their eyes on their television suddenly were hit by gunfire. It happened here on the north side. Police say they found one of those men in critical condition with a gunshot wound to his face. The other was shot in his back. They told police they were watching TV in a second floor unit at the Autumn Brook Apartments here on West Avenue when bullets tore through their window around 11 last night. Both victims were rushed to a hospital. Police, meanwhile, stayed behind to look for clues. The neighbors told them they saw a dark colored SUV speed off right after they heard those gunshots late last night. It does not appear police have made any arrests yet. Reporting from the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A game changing announcement from China's health minister. People infected with the coronavirus can spread the disease before showing symptoms. The contagiousness of the patient is so much more evident. There's a longer period of time where that person can spread the disease. Although some health officials question the statement, others believe it's better to err on the side of caution. I'm urging HHS, Health and Human Services, federal, to follow the CDC's proactive lead and declare a public formal health emergency for the coronavirus. And in doing so, it will unlock tens of millions of dollars for the CDC to access. The virus is confirmed in about a dozen countries, including China, the U.S. and France. And now there's a presumptive case in Canada. As a country, we've learned a lot since the SARS outbreak in 2003. And this has allowed our country and all levels of government to work very closely together to ensure that we are prepared. The director general of the World Health Organization tweeted Sunday that he's heading to Beijing to find out more about the coronavirus outbreak. My crystal ball says the next time the WHO committee uh, meets, I think it is likely that they will declare this a public health emergency of international concern. John Lawrence, KSAT 12 News. And in just the last 30 minutes, China has confirmed 769 new coronavirus cases in one day. That's frightening. Shocking. Let's check on the roadways once again and see how traffic is looking. As we take a look. There we go. As we take a look at the roadways, they still have these accidents in place. We're looking at uh, another accident. We have a major one eastbound Highway 90 McMullen, another one right at uh, Samora as well. Another accident. Now we're moving up to this one. Still causing problems now for the eastbound and westbound lanes of 1604. As you can see there, westbound 1604, only one lane open at the Lock Hill Summit exit due to an major accident earlier this morning. Mike. Thank you, sir. And look outside. Boy, it is just gorgeous out there. Sun's going to be coming up in about a half an hour and obviously a spectacular sunrise. Clear skies out there. 47 now here in town. Some 30s in the hill country. Grab a jacket, but boy, you won't need it by this afternoon. We'll gain anywhere from 25 close to 30 degrees. 70 at noon. 75 for high temperature today. More clouds tonight. A couple of showers late tonight and basically in the morning tomorrow. Then we'll clear out again and we're going to start to cool down. Instead of 75 would be 64 on Wednesday. 50s only. Thursday, Friday with a few more showers there. And then right now we're setting up for a good weekend. All right, thank you. And thank you so much for spending your Monday morning with us. We're back for GMSA at 9. We'll see you in about uh, two hours.